this computer. Share. Okay, right. Um, sorry, start from the beginning again. Okay, um, so what we did um, last week is we built a neural network, uh, a convolutional neural network, um, off of the ResNet uh, 34 uh, standard, which is a model that's been trained on uh, ImageNet, which is about a thousand different labels um, with many millions of images. So it's a really good one. And what we did is we uh, did a process called transfer learning, and we took a image set of um, Far Eastern, um, really interesting and tasty looking food, and which had about 100 labels in it and about a gigabyte of data. And we trained it um, to fairly accurately. And I think we can pat ourselves on our backs in that the people that publish this, um, the, which are, I mean, these guys are no slouches. They're generating data sets and um, creating state-of-the-art results, admittedly five years ago. And um, in the space of about an hour, uh, we beat their, um, uh, they, we beat what they had achieved as state-of-the-art uh, by quite a large margin. Uh, we were getting like 32% accuracy on the top, um, whereas they were, um, so we're getting 32% error rate on top, and we would have been much higher than that on top uh, five. And we, we got a better stat than they got on top five with top one, which is like, that's mega better. Uh, so anyway, what we did is we took the model, and because it's sitting on, oh, we've got another person. Um, because we had the model sitting on the virtual machine, and um, Google's Colab um, cluster, it wasn't much use to us. So what I did is we added on these extra two lines, um, the Google Colab import drive, and then the drive mount um, command, which mounts it. So it sends you a way to a uh, URL, and you then give it the permissions to use your Google account, and it gives you an authorization code, which uh, drops you back in. So it's pretty good. Do, they, um, have to, do you have to like authorize it every time? Yeah, yeah, every time. Because remember, you're getting a completely new machine every time you log in. The the machines are only designed to be kicking around for a couple hours while you're using them. Um, uh, the persistent stuff is the notebook, which they save for you in your drive as well. So it's weird. It's like something from your drive that you instantiate, and then you're connecting it back to your drive so you can save the output. So please uh, ask all. I have a question related to the same thing as well. So. Yeah. Uh, while playing with this notebook on Google Collab, if like there's a folder option in the site, so if we go on the folder option and and it gives us like a connect to the drive option. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So if we click on it, I remember like every time I come to my so you said mount drive, you see. Oh yeah. Top, that's upload, cool. refresh, and mount drive. So if we click on that mount drive, then we don't have to do it every time. It just stays there. Every time we load your drive, I think uh, hey. stays there. Oh, that is cracking. I didn't know that did that. Um, but they, it shows you Google are investing in this platform. So I'm going to dismiss that because I'm not actually going to mount it because I've already done this. Uh, but yeah, I'll definitely I'll have a look at that. That's really cool. Um, so yeah, if we scroll down past all the good training, all the good outputs, uh, the fancy model that we used, um, the stats that we got, um, and then um, added this little section here. So what it's doing is it is exporting the model in combination with its weights, its biases, so all the parameters that make the connections within the neural network. It is also um, outputting its inputs and its outputs and the model definition. So it's a more complete version of it, which it saves as a pickle file. And then I've just run a little command um, to copy the pickle file that gets generated over to my drive. And um, how do we look and see what was in the models folder? But you don't need any of that. And this is the bit to copy the um, the stage one, I thought it was worth keeping that as well in case I wanted to reuse it. And I copied across the 
categories because um, I wanted the labels for us to play with. All right, so if we go on here and start from the beginning, I'll have a run through the slide pack that I prepared. Okay, so uh, this is basically just covering the concept of exporting the model and it's explaining the difference between um, learn.export, um, which as it says, includes a full copy of the model so you can reconstitute it completely from scratch. And uh, whereas learn.save just stores your parameters, um, which is enough for you to, if, if you're doing things like storing like a checkpoint, um, doing a little bit more experimentation, and then you maybe want to restore back to that checkpoint, that's perfectly fine. Um, learn.save and learn.load are a really good um, set of, uh, of tools for that. Uh, one of the other things you can need to pull across is the classes um, or categories that you're using, um, and you need to have them in exactly the same uh, format, at, well, sorry, not format, but the same order as um, you trained with. So if um, spicy pickles, um, it corresponds to index three, it needs to be index free um, when, when you're using your model to do inference, which is what we are going to be attempting to do. Okay, so the first thing you have to do um, is after you've exported your trained model is you need to build yourself a web app, right? So there's literally thousands of different ways to build web apps. Um, there's tons and tons of cool uh, features. The one thing that you have to have is the ability to run Python on it uh, because that's the easiest way to get uh, fast AI kicking off. The three little bits, the, the bit that make it smart and ML -y are these probably these just down these three lines. So you've got um, learn, dot, uh, learn equals load learner. Um, so that's the basically taking the uh, model that you've pickled and keep pickling it, um, reconstituting it back into a, a functional neural network. Uh, the classes um, are you defining the uh, dictionary or list of um, classes that are in your model. Um, so that's the kind of things that you're wanting to predict, the classification problem that you're actually trying to solve. Um, you need a wee bit of housekeeping, as in you take the image that you uploaded or been supplied with and open it. So open image is the easiest way to do that in Python. And then you actually need to execute your prediction. Um, and then, so you take your reconstituted neural network, which we're just calling the learn um, object uh, and call predict against it, passing it the single image. Um, so instead of sending a whole batch like we were previously doing, just sending a single one um, to do inference on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly zip through the slides and then I'll actually show you doing it. Um, I find actually LightSail offers you best bang for your buck for something that's persistent sitting in the cloud and uh, gives you all the flexibility that having your own, uh, own virtual machine running on your own tin would give you. Uh, the, price point on it as well is hard to argue against. Uh, $3.50 for a cloud-facing um, virtual machine that um, has all the infrastructure that an Elastic Compute um, node would have, um, that, that is pretty good. And uh, there's a lot of other things bundled into it, um, like um, IO and uh, disk usage and storage and all that other stuff. Um, and there's some pretty cool little features, like um, they've got pre-built images to build like a lamp or a lamp stack. Um, so if you want PHP running really quickly that they've got a Bitnami um, model uh, images that you can build it from. This is not to say this is the only place you can do it. Um, the model that I copied uh, to make this um, was, was supposed to run on a, a place called Render. Um, so to those guys, um, they, are, they cost five bucks. Uh, a month, but they only allow you to run, it's like a Kubernetes style vibe there. It's like they're letting you run a single inference engine for, uh, for that $5. Um, if you run your own tin um, or you run your own virtual machine like on LightSail or Google Cloud Platform or any of these other ones, um, 
what the advantage it gives you there is that you can run multiple ones because um, say for instance, I stick up like six different demos. I'm not gonna be running them all the time and I'm not gonna be under any heavy load. Uh, so anyway, this is why I've, I went for light sail. Um, there's um, things like Python Anywhere and uh, other free options that where you can upload the uh, up, upload your models and they'll run just as fine there. Uh, so what I what I'll run through is basically I, I prefer to build these VMs completely from scratch uh, so I know exactly what um, packages I've got on it and also to ensure that I've got a fairly minimal set of packages. Uh, it, it, I, I, the three dollar fifty level one is giving you like half a gig of memory. Um, that's not a lot to play around with, so you don't want any additional bloat running on it. Um, I think it'll probably run on any of the Linux distributions, uh, but um, the one I'm most comfortable with is sixteen oh four. Um, so I, that's pretty much why I I chose that one. Uh, but if you've got a preferred uh, Linux distro, um, a bit interesting to see if uh, if you launched this and created it and uh, showed us it worked. Um, the other thing that you need to do is set up your security. So the application will be running on a port. The port we've chosen is 5000. So you need to edit your firewall rules to allow that port to have access. By default on, um, on LightSail, they open up SSH and HTTP. Uh, so you basically click add another not particularly complicated. And then the next bit I'll show you is um, adding the capacity, because unfortunately 500 uh, megabytes, I mean, like back in the old days, that was a lot, um, but <laughs> it's still not that much. So if you add a swap file, what that obviously is doing it, well, I don't know if it's obvious, but a swap file is basically just using a section of your disk allocation to pretend to be memory. Uh, it's not a great high performance way of doing it, uh, but if you only need temporarily to have one and a half gigabytes to build your model, and most of the time you're only going to need half a gigabyte to run your model, uh, it makes a lot more sense um, to just create a temporary swap file. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you that working in a little bit. And I find the best way to productionize these kind of things, and a lot of people agree, is to put them into containers. Um, Docker's one of the leading container models, um, and they are, they, they're, they've they become almost the de facto industry standard. Um, so building a Docker allows you to have a very repeatable and transportable model. So if you decide that, hey, uh, LightSail maybe jacks up their prices by threefold, and you go, <laughs> I want to take my model somewhere else. If you've built, uh, if you built it in Docker, you're you're literally going to be able to just ship it somewhere else. You're not going to have to do any rebuild or reconfig or any of that other nonsense. Um, you've got something that's fundamentally fully transportable, a bit like Java um, originally intended to be. Uh, but most people find it doesn't port that well. All right. Um, so that's the instructions um, for installing it. We'll see that happening. And then obviously just check that your um, install is hanging together. Um, there's some really good, uh, there's a really good Hello World example that allows you to check that your uh, Docker install has gone well. And once you've built and deployed your uh, Docker uh, container, um, you'll be able to just jump over to the IP address and test it works. Um, uh, so there's, uh, I just, I like to stick the sources of all the things I've stolen. Um, at the end of my presentation. All right, so anyway, that was a quick whistle top through. Uh, is there any questions before we begin? And I'll actually demonstrate as doing it for the pre-prepared one. And then um, what I was hoping we could do is do some of that mob programming. And what we do is we try and use the, uh, apply it to the uh, data that I've um, pulled out of our food database. Does that make sense? Thumbs up. Yep. Yes, it's good. Fun. Yeah, cool. All right, let's do that. Okay. Um, so copy less and so it, it, what I've done to save a bit of time, I've uh, shifted all this stuff over onto uh, 
S3, uh, S3 and Lightsail are like they're all on the same big mega corporate network, so they, they just really really fast. Uh, a bit like if you're using like Google uh, storage on on the Google platform um, when you're using uh, Google virtual machines, they, they they just generally go insanely fast. Oh, we've got another person joining us. Hey, they missed the presentation, but they'll get to see it actually happening. I have a question about S3. Did you have to pay for the storage? The storage on S3? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you pay for it. But I mean, it's like pennies per gigabyte month. Yeah. Uh, it's super cheap. Uh, I don't even notice, but um, I, I mean, I've got tons of stuff on S3. Um, but I did you have my, to choose a particular one? Sorry to interrupt you. Because um, there's like different versions. One's where... Um, I forget what, what it's actually called professionally. Oh, you've got Glacier and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah don't, but I mean, you, that, that's if you're storing terabytes of stuff that you don't regularly access. Um, mm -hmm. the, um, or big corporates with like petabytes of data, uh, it starts making sense to store your annual, um, your, your annual data for doing your annual reports. It might make sense to store it, store it on Glacier, but it, it, the, the problems with that is that when you move it onto Glacier, you're um, you're trading off cost to availability and speed. So the yeah. really frozen um, Glacier stuff, um, it, it's basically you've got to put in a service request to get the data back, um, and it takes about two days. Um, the volumes of data we'll be using and hearing about, um, you're still only talking pennies um, to have an enterprise level um, uh, web hosted storage. Uh, the S3 is genuinely very, very, very good value for money. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, it just happened in the past way, way in the past that I bought the wrong product and it was really expensive. And thankfully Amazon gave me a refund because <laughs> oh. yeah, <laughs> that can happen. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. Um, I, I left my instance running for a month and I got charged 400 <laughs> I, think I think I think that's actually what happened to me as well yeah it, but they, they refunded it I was just like I'm an idiot please help <laughs> yeah exactly yeah that's one bit I always make a point of mentioning whenever I'm telling people to use um, a good cloud platform or anything similar I, I'm like guys make sure you turn your stuff off and I've, um, uh, anyone that's been doing a course with me, I've sent them off the um, uh, auto reboot um, script. Um, and basically it, it, what it does is it just pulls for connections to it. And if it's not doing anything useful, it just shuts itself down. Uh, yeah, you, you don't, these things are cheap to use, but you've got to make sure you shut them down. Uh, so anyway, I, so I've dumped them on there. Uh, what we're going to do here. I'm just going to see if I can hide this. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. That's much better. Um, uh, so uh, we were creating our instance. So um, uh, I'll go back to logging into LightSail. So yeah, basically, if you've got AWS account, um, you'll have a LightSail account. And they do need a credit card and things like that. But um, their costs are fairly good as long as you're being sensible. and. Um, so I create instance. I don't really care about the availability zone. America is fine for the moment. We're not going to catch COVID off them. Um, click to make sure you're using Linux, uh, Microsoft uh, Blueprints. You need much bigger servers. Um, click OS only. Click Ubuntu. I ignore all these ones. They even give you the first month free. That's crazy good. I've got me. I run one of the five dollar servers because I'm feeling flush. And uh, default name will be fine. So create instance. It takes uh, because it's instantiating a new virtual machine for you. It does take a few seconds for it to load. But if you can imagine how long it would take you to build a machine, even two or three years ago, uh, it really isn't a, a, a long thing. So while that's having a little grunt, um, is there any questions? This is a good point. Oh, no questions. All right. Um, it might not let us log in immediately. Um, because all of the machines are up, it might. Oh, there you go. We're good to go. All right. Um, can we see the um, the Ubuntu terminal? No. Oh, hold on. Well, then I'll change my sharing. 
you share the Ubuntu terminal. Share. Can we see it now? Yes. Yep. Yay. Okay, I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> Slowly but surely. All right. Um, one thing to mention, uh, do you see the, um, the scripts that they uh, put into the PowerPoint? Um, unfortunately, what PowerPoint does is they're a bit cheeky and they fire in uh, lots and lots of little like non-breaking spaces and stuff like that just to make the formatting look good. And unfortunately, what it does is it bursts the um, ability, it bursts it for Unix. Uh, so I'm just pasting in the first little um, section of commands uh, to create a swap file. It just takes a little while. Um, it's basically initializing a, a gigabyte of storage. And then if we check three, there we go, we've got a swap file. That's actually really useful for any um, web facing um, machine. No point in buying something with twice as much memory, um, even if it is cheap, um, if you can get away with half as much memory and an equally sized swap file. For productionized machines though, I would not recommend going over the amount of your real memory um, for your swap. Um, for this one, we're, we're actually going more than twice um, in swap versus memory. That is horrendous for performance, uh, but we're only using it the one time. Um, so the next bit was the um, installation for Docker. Uh, so let's do it. I'll just do this a line at a time so you can see what's happening. Some of this stuff is a bit weird. Um, so what you need to do is add a key for the uh, repository and then you need to add the repository. Unfortunately you can't just um, app get install or oh, what's happening there? Why did that happen? Oh. Yeah okay it did it. Um, so that's adding the repository so it knows where to look for the code. And then you do an app get update. So that's it, finding where everything is. And then you do an install. So it's pulling together all the packages that Docker needs and it's installing Docker Community Edition. Hopefully cleanly. Okay, and remember I was saying it's good to check that your Docker is installed. It's always good to check your work. Uh, so that shows you that Docker is up. And the service is running, and then you can run this special uh, image called Hello World, and it should. Oh, ah, there we go. that's one of the things we will point. Um, you can add your um, Ubuntu user to Docker group, uh, but that takes another reboot, and I, I just wanted to whiz through this. Okay, so um, you, uh, basically what you have to do is um, uh, prefix all your Docker commands with sudo. It's not that big a pain in the bum. Right, so you can see there it's saying hello from Docker. So what it's done is it's created, uh, it's pulled down a Docker image and it has created a Docker container and it's run a Docker container. So that's always good. All our connections are all working well. Um, I'll give you some good Docker commands. There's the, the, the main ones to be honest are Docker images, Docker containers, um, and the ability to list your containers and stop them. And so I'll show you those in action in a little bit. All right, um, so what I'll do is I'll pull down um, uh, one of my old ones, the cancer classifier, and we will build it.
So while that's happening, um, yeah, no, we'll just watch it happen. Doesn't take very long. So it's pulling down all the packages that um, I've stuck in the requirements at DXD. Uh, don't worry about that. We read bit there. And it's downloading all the things to make an incredibly basic uh, uh, Linux distribution with the ability to run Python and a couple of other bits and pieces. So it's on step four. You can see it's installing Python. Um, we'll also see it's installing PyTorch. Um, if we all remember, PyTorch is the uh, library that this version of Fast AI is built on. It's building all that sort of stuff down. Pretty groovy. Do you know if the next versions are not going to be built on Torch anymore? Uh, they're talking about um, changing the underlying stuff because they're building so much themselves now um, on version two. Um, the thing that I posted was I was talking to the Swift um, developer stack at Google, and they they yeah. they it was sounding like he was he was going to rebuild a lot of the platform um, at the bottom layer, and. The stuff that he's building now, um, like his vision libraries and stuff, are are like miles ahead of uh, PyTorch. PyTorch is now like merging his changes in to try and keep up. Uh -huh. So yeah, so it's, it's an interesting position he's in, where he's now talking to uh, like the PyTorch guys and getting the PyTorch guys to change things. He's talking to Google to get them to change things about TensorFlow. Okay. This, should, uh, this next bit um, that is running here is in, uh, installing and building Starlet, um, which is based on Uvicorn. It's one of these things that allows you to um, do a, uh, it gives you the ability to build a website that you can publish. And uh, this is giving me warnings about um, my version being slightly out of date. Oh, that's it, built it. So if we do sudo docker, and container ls see if a container is running nope it's not so oh, my mouse is wiggling a wee bit this uh, is plain text so what we'll do is we'll tell the um image that we've created um, to run and instantiate a container. So Uvicorn is now running. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll create a new share and show you back my, go back to light sale share. So Ubuntu 2, if we click on it, remember we need to go into networking and we need to add another. We'll give it the port 5,000. Just think, how long does it take you in work to do a firewall change? <laughs> this is how long it takes on light sale. And if we go to the public IP address, um, you can create static web addresses as well, but um, we'll do this is a public one. And we'll give it the port number. Yay! All right, so we're back cancer verifier so i don't actually have any good oh i've got a dodgy mole i don't know if that works uh, we'll give it a dodgy mole and we'll analyze it i uh, doesn't think that's cancer well, that's nice um, it's totally the wrong image it's supposed to be histiopathic slide uh, slides for this one uh, but you get the point it's it's tried to do an inference it's probably created a garbage result but it has run the model in the cloud in what did that take like seven minutes so success, hurrah. All right, so what I was going to do is we'll jump back here. And we'll go back to uh, we jump back to the VM. I'll do new share, Ubuntu two share. 
And if we kill this one, and we do uh, to do Docker um, um, Dino LS, we should see that, yep, yeah, there's nothing there. Good. So that's it destroyed. So do you want to do mob programming and we'll, we'll try and build our one? Yeah, cool. All right, cool. Oh, sorry, my daughter's in. What do you want? Um, why do they need to ask me if they can watch Frozen 2? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to say, let it go. <laughs> All right, go cool. right. So, um, do you want to start from absolutely scratch, um, and we'll, or do you want to just try and um, hack and modify this one? What do you mean by the actual scratch? Oh, like um, completely destroy this instance and build another one. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, right. Go destroy. Ahead. So close that. Off. Destroy it. You've got me back full screen. All right, let's go back to Ubuntu, go back to home, and we've got Ubuntu 2. Need to be careful I don't delete the one I like. Uh, delete that one. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen. Share screen. Cool. And um, so, uh, what I did there to just delete it. Um, is if you actually, if you do this in the first month, they don't even charge you the three dollars fifty. That one goes and warns you, and you say yes, delete. It does kill everything. It's true. Um, so, should we start with the? Um, what I'll do actually, I'll share. Um, I'm going to stop the share, and I'll share my whole screen. And then you guys can see the notepad and stuff like that with all my secrets. So this is how it all happens. Showing you behind the curtain. Right. Um, can I remember what the first thing to do is? Create instance. Yeah. Do we want Microsoft? No. <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> So it was OS only. Um, Amazon Linux would probably work more efficiently. Uh, they uh, they build in uh, modifications to the kernel to run uh, more cleanly and quickly on their infrastructure. <laughs> Ubuntu. So why are we going with Ubuntu? Because uh, I know it works and I haven't tested the other one. Fair, <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, got the magical three dollar fifty price point, and we'll call this one Ubuntu. Club. Okay, and then just create instance. Okay, um, right. So what we'd have probably been doing, uh, we would need the bits of the app that we're going to change are uh, to summarize the, the bits of the changing are the model that it's using and the weights and parameters, and we're also going to be changing the output, and we'll also be needing to change the index um, HTML, because we'll need something that looks a little bit different from the, the, the one we've currently got. Uh, so I, I want to ask a question. Yeah. The, uh, the, the zone, it should always be US, right? No, you can put it anywhere you want. OK. No, uh, I don't think they even care. I don't think the pricing actually changes when you move the zones. Uh, when Lightsail first launched, it was only in Ohio. Um, I think they've, um, they're covering other um, areas now, so you can probably build it anywhere you want. Okay. Is it for connection? So, like, because it's like the servers are in US, so if you're in US, it, the connection time is shorter. Uh, SP is uh, replicated all over the world now, um, so any of the major availability zones um, should be pretty, pretty crazy fast to S3. Um, it's not even uh, S3 isn't considered a zone. It's um, it's it's got a global region. Because recently I was trying to create a pre-assigned URL for S3 uh, bucket uh, objects. And uh, I was using US until I changed to EU West. 
Ah, uh, right. You're talking about the ability to zone the uh, for, for legal reasons. Yeah, I, I don't know why, but I just had to uh, because I was trying it. I couldn't get it right mm -hmm. until I changed to EU West. Yeah, I've sw I swapped mine over to that as well, um, but it was more for uh, uh, data protection reasons. Um, if I ever have any pictures of people, I don't really want them going to the States. Okay, uh, so what we'll do, if you remember, this is just this little button here and it clicks and it launches. A... Virtual machine. So we've got the cheat sheet over here. I suppose it probably doesn't really matter what order you do them in. Um, the only thing that you will ha happen is you'll get an out of error, uh, sorry, out of memory error if you try to do the Docker build statement uh, before you've um, given it some extra memory. Shall we flat in the swap file? Uh, I have a question for you. So what exactly swap is doing? So it's just increasing the memory. Yeah, it's giving it more available, or it's giving it, fake, it's faking it having more available memory. What do you mean by faking? Like, so if, if you're increasing from 0.5 GB to 1 GB, then we go into the other pay scale of, of, of or the services being provided. So uh, I don't get it, like exactly what's happening in background. How can we just increase the memory size and not being charged for the e extra memory which we are using? We're, we're basically making a trade-off, like um, silicon memory is like super, super fast. Um, uh, solid state drives are fairly fast. Um, so. What they what we're doing is we're we're extending the area of what's considered memory that our processes can run in. Uh, we're extending that memory to sit on the SSD rather than on the on on physical like proper memory. Okay, I think yeah. Okay, I get an idea. So for example. Uh, like when we create a new EC2 instance, so we have RDS memory, like we get 30 GB, let's say, yeah. at the start, but we get some extra uh, memory at, apart from it as well. So we are including that memory into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no, no, there's no real memory getting created here. It's just um, allocating some storage on the drive um, and mm -hmm. pretending it's memory. Uh, and normally what would happen is the, the date, like if you say, for instance, you had, um, 400 megabytes of regularly accessed memory, and you mm -hmm. had 600 megabytes of not so regularly accessed memory, it would move the 600 megabytes onto the swap file, and uh, it would leave the 400 on the real memory. So, and what's the limit? Like, how, how much can we tweak it? Oh, uh, it's, it's a trade-off of performance. I mean, you can create a swap file as big as you want um, to create a whole bunch of fake memory, but um, it, the the stuff that's going to go quick is only the stuff that's within the uh, that's on the real real memory. And you'll you'll actually I think you'll run into some serious performance issues if anything that you're holding in memory is genuinely big, because it will be partially swap partially on disk and partially in the in the main memory. Okay. Makes it's sense. interesting stuff. It's not really my it's not my main area of expertise. I'm sure it's something that I've copied and pasted a million times from um, something I, uh, I must have looked up years ago. So yeah, you could probably increase the swap um, swap size um, bigger. That that count is the, the the size of it, I think, and you would need to, um, and they you could up the gigabyte count in the f allocate statement. All right. Oh, I better move this up. I think some of it's going off the bump. Yeah, there we go. So we've got our swap file created. And then should we just do the flat the instructions in to install Docker? Right, and um, while this is happening, I'll show you the 
GitHub repo for of the example one. So get Should put a picture up there eventually. So you can see that um, what I did is I branched or sort of forked it off of the render examples. And if we look at the, I won't bother going into the Docker file and things like that, but the requirements is the, that's basically telling the Docker um, build to use these versions of the libraries. So you can see here, it's got like the Uvicorn and Starlet, which are like our web server, uh, but it's installing PyTorch, FastAI. It's one of the important things to, to mention is that the FastAI that you're running on, you want it to be the same as the FastAI that you trained it on, um, or as close as possible, because you'll, you'll get a lot less warnings. Go back here. And up into the app itself. Um, the main one that we'll be modifying is server.py. So what that does is it's got the script in it. The important bits are this um, export file. So at the moment, this is pulling the um, cancer one down from a Google Drive. Uh, but as I said, I've already stuck it on S3, so we can use that instead. Um, our classes are going to be different. Uh, the classes I've had were just two, so it's a lot easier. Um, and I think everything else in this will probably be the same. If we wanted to change the port, we could change it here, um, but why not just leave it the same? Uh, if we go back again to app here, I'll show you the other bit that we'll probably have to modify. If we go into the view, it's like a model view controller kind of build that we've got here. Um, then there's the index, so we'll probably want to change things around here, like the title, the, the blurb at the top of it. Um, but everything else on that can probably stay the same. I didn't actually change very much um, from the render example um, to get this going. That's just a wee preview of what we'll probably need to do. Uh, then we'll install Docker CE. So I, I generally, this is the way I tend to work. I'll find something that does almost what I want to do and I'll download it and I'll hack it to make it do what I want it to do. The building things from scratch is great for learning, but it's not great for productivity. So I mean, for this one, if it's okay, we'll just pull down the my starter for 10 and we'll modify it. So, so rather than build, um, what we'll do is we'll just clone it and then we'll modify it. And then we'll build it. Oh, pasted the wrong thing. <laughs> Sorry, it's not going to do any damage. <laughs> that was a bit stupid. Uh, unfortunately, what I, what I did there is I, I, I control V'd um, but the, how was it called? The clipboard on the machine isn't the clipboard that's on my machine. I'm used to, normally what I do is I properly SSH onto them um, using a terminal, but I'm on stinky old Windows at the moment. Uh, okay, so that should have got us our code down. Um, so there it is. That's the I3. We'll have a look, so we can see the requirements there. Um, we're built on roughly the same model, so um, we probably don't even need to change any of the requirements. Um, so we'll just jump into the app. Uh, uh, has anyone got a preferred editor? I'll, I'll just use Vi otherwise. Ah, everybody's gonna go with Vi. So, no, no comments, you can use the one you're using. So we're just basically editing the server Python file. Okay. So if we scroll down here, we can see what 
it's doing. It's important the HTTP um, uh, async IO. That's to stop it blocking when it's uploading the image. Um, and Uvicorn, which is the uh, that's the tool that we're going to be using to present the web page. And we're pulling in Fast AI and Fast AI Vision. And then we've got Starlet, um, which is the that's the thing that's working in conjunction with Uvicorn um, to render our web pages. So the first bit here is the export file so, URL. The question I want to ask, what's the difference between using Amazon and uh, uh, platforms like Iroku? There, this is what I said at the beginning. There's literally tens of thousands of people trying to get our dollars. Um, they, they're all offering slightly different things. Um, and this is why I, I'm suggesting that it's best to containerize your apps and, okay. then, and then you can port them to wherever you want. The digital ocean might undercut um, Amazon next week and, and the smart uh, dollar is going to jump there. <laughs> So yeah, uh, yeah. Don't, just because we're doing this in light sale, I mean, that's the, the thing I like about light sale is uh, for for our purposes is it, it's very flexible and it's completely free for the first um, month. So it allows you guys to experiment. You don't put you don't have to put your uh, put your money on the line okay. if you, as long as you delete it in the in the first month. So, so I'll delete the. On this file as well, is there an advantage to downloading it from the drive at runtime rather than pulling it into your Docker machine or your Docker image? The reason they recommend pulling it in at, at runtime is that it's only going to happen the first time it gets instantiated. So when you launch the Docker container, it before it serves up any requests, it'll it'll download your your export file and reconstitute it. Um, the big uh, there's a big advantage to keeping your Docker containers really small and light, and keeping your um, keeping the things that are likely to change separate from them. Uh, it, it comes into into its own when you're running like big Kubernetes clusters and stuff like that. So, uh, I and the other thing as well is that if you're running on something really lightweight, like I haven't managed to get this running on. Um, what would be the small like a lambda? If you're trying to get this to run on a lambda server, um, they they only allow you like 50 megabytes um, in total. Um, so in that in that situation, you just wouldn't be able to fit it. Uh, okay, so, cheers. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah it's it's I I like to keep the container as small as possible, and if there's any big bloaty changeable files, um, you keep them on somewhere like S3. Because the the, the the lag time, um, it's like the warm up time on your um, um, your node's going to be a little bit slower, uh, but it's not going to make any difference in its ability to, to run inferences. So we, okay, yeah, thanks. We, we need the URL for ours. If we jump over here onto S3, where I've prepared it for us, we've got our food.pickle. So if you click on that, it'll give you the object URL. I click the make public one, which you should only really click if you really, really want to make it public because everybody can see it. It's still public. All right. And if you copy the link, oh, copy the link address. The other thing I like about S3 is it's got um, your public links are nice and short. And they're not full of like um, garbagey stuff. So if we click insert, uh, this is plain text. That's our pickle file. Um, and the file name obviously isn't export.pickle anymore because I called it food. So any guesses what we need to change here? <laughs> Change export to food. Yeah. Okay, and then this one gets a bit trickier. Um, did, 
because we could just pull down um we could just pull down the the file um i've done a, a really hacky way of doing this stuck it into <laughs> stuck it into excel and then uh, piv, uh what do you call it transposed it and then done this dodgy concat <laughs> to give us the information so really nasty <laughs> Shouldn't it be part of the learner as well? Shouldn't it be like an attribute? You, you would think, um, but unfortunately, what the what it it stores is the it stores the index, so it outputs like the, uh, the they are talking that this is one of the things that's coming into fast AI too, and um, they they are going to store that kind of information. But if you think about it, actually, there's there's a two ways of looking at this. If you want to internationalize your model, like so like if a Chinese person was coming to, to look at this, you probably would want to have a, 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 a second list of um, human interpretable values. You, you probably do want it to come out at 65 um, from the model and then you convert 65 into the, the yeah. language that the, the person is, consume it and makes sense grab all those uh this is actually a bit that i haven't got to work yet um so i'm hoping that we're going to get some interest in uh, this this looks horrible <laughs> that, i'm sure there's a better way of doing this <laughs> It works. It works. <laughs> so that gets them in there. Um, I I'm not convinced that's the best way of doing it. So if anyone can come up with a better way, um, I'm more than happy to change it. Uh, then you can see down here um, we've got a download file. So it takes our URL and our destination, and then we've got a set up learner. Um, so what it does is it asynchronously downloads the file. And if you remember, we gave it the, the file URL and the export file name up above. So that should all be good. And then it loads the learner. And there's a wee bit um, like a exception there in case you've um, used a really old version of fast AI um, where it, if it trained on the GPU, it had to run on the GPU. That's one actually a good point to make actually. Um, uh, when you're training, you need to be able to process tons of data really, really quickly. So a GPU is massively, massively good. But when you're running inference in almost all cases, you want it to run on a CPU. Uh, CPUs can be bought at commodity prices, super, super cheap. And uh, generally having inference times in the fraction of a second aren't that bad. When you're training, you want the inferences to be getting done in the fraction of a fraction or a fraction of a second. But um, when, you're, when you're doing inference, you only need to run it at uh, the speed that the human's going to be willing to, uh, the the human that's consuming the information, um, you don't need to go faster than the human. Is basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, so I would encourage you guys to have a look around this code, and I would also encourage you guys not to think that Starlet's the only way to do this. It'd be interesting to see if, um, if people can come up with better, faster, or more readily usable or interpretable, fancy, cool GUIs and stuff like that. So what we'll do is we'll write and quit that. And let's go looking for our next file. So the, I think I said the next one was in view, wasn't it? And we'll do sudo by index.html. Okay, so what? Um, have a look and just shout out what you want me to change. Let's change the title. So I change 
title. Oh, change the title. Yeah. Just Let's make it, some, make it something a bit more interesting. Two words. Insert. We'll call it something. What, what should we call it? Good. <laughs> Food classifier or something like that? Yeah, food yeah. classifier. Okay. Paragraph, I guess, underneath. Change the paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. So we just get delete all this then. Yeah, I was just thinking to write something similar to you would. Uh, similar would be difficult because you only had two classes before. Now, like, mm -hmm. I guess you could, yeah. What would you say in detail? So, did we just say, like, what, what would we like our users to see? Upload your food pictures, and I'll try to guess what it is. Yes. Like what it is or something? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then if we scroll down, the rest of it looks pretty good because it's not saying anything about food or cancer or anything like that, does it? No, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we'll right and quit that. Okay, and then we'll jump right back to the beginning. And then the next thing to do is build it um, and see if it compiles, I suppose. And then we'll try and improve it if it works. And we'll try and debug it if it breaks. One of the cool things about this is, uh, you know, it's doing all that pull where it's pulling down all the base images that it's building on. Well, it takes a wee while the first time, but if we then go in, into debug mode and we build the next time, anything that hasn't changed, it won't download and it won't try to recompile. Uh, so when we, if, say for instance, we're trying to debug and improve the app, uh, it's really, it won't take it, you won't have to see all this screens of, information flow past each time it will do it much quicker which hopefully we'll get to see um is anyone on the call uh, done, done this similar with a built an inference engine before i'm sorry repeat can you repeat oh uh, is anybody actually created uh uh a web facing app that people can use to do ML before. Yeah, but like only using already existing systems like Microsoft Corporate Services and things like that. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, 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 I use uh, Flask. Oh, that'd be cool. It'd be good. I think one of the follow ups to this would be great is if uh, someone's got another way of uh, productionizing it. Uh, it'd be really good if they could do like a wee. Um, version of this and get them get the model live some other way but flux is uh, simpler than this i think it might not be as much uh, of learning for you yeah but it's good right <laughs> <laughs> easy. okay yeah i Done tried flask. with lambda and and with lambda it worked for me uh some tricks there but but we can do with aws lambda as well mm-hmm yeah, I managed to get, um, what was it called, uh, the oh, YOLO. I managed to get YOLO um, running on um, that where you, you dropped, a, dropped it into an S3 um, bucket and the, there was a hook from Lambda on the S3 bucket, grabbed the image out and yeah, yeah. ran inference yeah, yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. It's a great yeah. way to do it. It's a good pipeline. 
How long did it take yeah. to do inference? Oh, um, depends on whether you were doing, if you're firing lots of requests through, um, it's really, really quick um, because the um, Lambda sits, um, Lambda has a similar problem when, you, when you're launching a, a new Docker instance, it, it has a, a warm up time. Uh, but if you're hitting the same Lambda service over and over again, um, it reuses the same same image. I see. Hey, <laughs> I love it when it does that first time. Uh, so I guess the next thing to do is test it. Sorry, bump. Jump back to. Where is he? Instances. There we go. Right. If I'm forgetting anything, shout out. So we've got a public IP address for ML Club. Grab that. You just the firewall. Oh, we forgot the firewall. Good shout. Networking. Add another. So we've built it. Is there anything else I've forgotten? Actually doing a Docker run, isn't it? Ah, good call. Yeah, we forgot to Docker run it. So I might have actually been a bit too presumptuous. Just because it builds, it doesn't mean it runs. So if we jump back to this one. So we did get a lot more red this time. Um, there's st uh, there are just warnings about the torch um, having changed a bit. Hopefully it's not going to crash. Fingers crossed. Everyone cross your fingers. <laughs> yeah, just warnings. So we should be okay. And Unicorn's running on port 5000. Jump back to this and take the IP address. I don't think the static... Um, we don't need my drive anymore. I think the static IP addresses don't cost you anything either as long as you're actually using them. Hey, good classifier. Yeah, it's working. Yes, mm -hmm. All right, select an image. Oh, here's some I downloaded earlier. <laughs> and we click analyze. Check if it works. Oh, it's having a think. Is it going to do it? And one of the things that comes into play here is it depends on how big your image is. Uh, this is a really high resolution picture of a 49, whatever 49 yeah, is. Informative. <laughs> so if we go back to here, let's go over and we'll have a look what 49 is. 49 is Grill Pacific Sorry. Is that what you Google search? I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I, 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 oh, yeah. I Google searched um, uh, random. Chinese food. <laughs> it looks like it's something grilled, Maybe so it seems should, like it's doing. Yeah, it's pretty, it sounds pretty accurate. I would Google it though, just to see what comes out if I go grilled Pacific, sorry. <laughs> right, we'll pick one maybe that we're going to less, less disagree about. <laughs> <laughs> we should all know what these are. Oh, sorry, it's fish, so. Mm. Oh, yeah, you, you don't know if there's a, oh, sorry, it's fish. Oh, so it maybe didn't yeah, do so. the job. Yeah, it, it recognized that it was grilled. Uh -huh. It did look like it had a pin at the end. Did it? 71. Let's, oh, let's, oh, I keep doing the wrong thing. Uh, 71. This is cool, though, because what we're doing is we're giving it data that it's never seen before. Uh, like row. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's a row, so it'd be anything could be. <laughs> Yeah, it's detected the rolliness of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That probably is just stronger, I don't know. So you're saying that, that for larger images, it'll run slower. Is that just from the upload, or is that the actual inference taking longer as well? It's the upload and um, the resizing. Because uh, remember, all the images are going into the um, neural network the same size. So if we've made, it, um, made the input, 
data bunch, if we made it like 299 by 299, it'll, it, the image will get resized to that, that size and shape. Okay, cool. So it's, it's working. Can um, we try a banana or something that's very specific? Oh yeah, okay, let's do that. Well, cooked food is a bit more, you know, difficult. Okay, that's a pretty good banana. Save image as banana. It'd be cool if I gave it the URL of an image and it would just do inference on that. Oh yeah, you can do that. Yeah. But then you'd have to do hosting, you know? Uh-huh. There, there's actually a, a fast AI um, API that automates that and you can run them all in parallel. It automates what? Oh, uh, mass downloading. So what's ah, cool. What's 37? Yeah, I think you meant like you, if you, if you're on your page, you can select a URL instead of uh, uploading a picture. Oh, that's I think that's portage. Portage. Mm. <laughs> oh, bananas in the list. <laughs> I don't think bananas portage. in the list. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, I should probably yeah. have asked first. Portage is very yellow in most pictures, so. Yeah. I tried we'll to look for something. Let's look up a cro it. It's got croissant. Let's look up a croissant. Okay. It's a very odd split between Asian cuisine and just hamburger, pizza, croissant. It's an interesting list of foods that they've chosen. Yeah. So we'll grab like one of these. Well, that's a huge one. Uh, should we see if we can just get that image? Yeah. Mm. We don't need a huge one. Um, this is <laughs> making me really hungry first. <laughs> I know none of us have had dinner probably. <laughs> Select image, uh, sod, analyze. So it's 13, it thinks it is. What was 30? Hey, croissant. Yeah, this has got bang on for that. Hey, hey we got a croissant classifier. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we do hamburger? Yeah. Sure. That's probably a good. Um, that the, the, but then these are probably the easy ones. Uh, Why is yeah, chip? they're very definite. Yeah. I, I saw chip butty in that list as well. That seems like a very UK specific food to be classifying. Yeah, that would be stuck out. It's weird. <laughs> it's amongst the others. What chip if you butt. have multiple mm, items like beer, chips, burger? Mm, I guess which one is the most obvious? Ooh. Hey, Chip Buddy obviously looks like it's gone all over the world. I think the Australians like them. All right, so the one thing I'm, I'm noticing is it's kind of a pain looking up these numbers. You should just build it in there. So just before you return the value, just do an index from the list. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Is I it think easy? that's a, an egg roll. What did you put in? It was a chip butty. Oh, well, to be honest, look at that monstrosity. <laughs> <laughs> They're delicious. So 17. I'm not saying this is going to be the best classifier in the world. Uh, 17. Hamburger. Mm. So it's getting some of this. Uh, so um, try and see if we can hack it to get it to give us the labels rather than the numbers. Yep. So that's yeah, probably the biggest yeah. user user issue. Does it start with one or with zero, this list? Um, one. one. Okay. One. Yeah. Yields on rice. Mm. Wow. Yum. <laughs> cool. We'll get some test images for that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Um, so obviously, if you're running this for real, um, uh, um, you could just close this window and it would continue to run. Um, but because we have run it in process, um, we can actually shut it down by control C. If you're running it, um, if you're running it 
and you shut down um, your terminal and then came back to it because the container um, will still be running in, in your absence. Um, what you do is you do Docker. Um, actually, let's, uh, hold on, I'll just show you that just now. Um, so if you run it out of process. Oh. It's because you've got IT in there, I think. Oh, I had IT the last time. That was weird. I wonder why it crashed so immediately. Oh, that's weird. Broken something. Is any Docker still running? Maybe it's trying to lack the support that has been used. Oh, it might be. Uh, oh, yeah, it's still running. Mm. Um, so yeah, that, that's a bit I was going to show you. Um, so sudo docker um, rm. Oh no, first you have to kill it. Thank you. Container stop, and then you give it the container ID. So is this we? Then you can type only the first few characters, and it will find it. Oh, does it? Yeah, if you oh, one fa. Or even one F, I think it should work. I'm going to try that. As long as, it's, as long as it's unique in the list of the. Yeah. I'm trying to auto complete it. What do you do to make no, it? Just, uh, just, just enter as it is one oh. F and then hit enter. Oh, that's, I love this. Learn, I'm learning stuff too. Yeah, and that's shut it down. Ah, I'm going to use that. That's great. I've never been on a Docker course. I've just learned enough to make <laughs> to be dangerous. Yeah, I'm learning on YouTube. Cool. So we've shut down. Um, so we can nip back into the directory. Uh, and then into the app directory. And we've got a server.py. So do you think it'll be the server.py that we'll need to change or the, um, the HTML? Server. Yeah. Uh, it's the .py that we have to, because that's passing something to the view, right? Mm. Oh. oh, so do uh, That's it, because it's proper model view controller. OK, so what we've got. Oh, that's cool. And um, I've got this. Uh, is the ad, uh, uh, this is exposing my Python ignorance. If you're not giving it uh, a name value pair, is this still a dictionary or is it just a list? Well, it's a list, but you can use the index as a kind of mapping. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that. Um, You'll need to subtract one, though, right? Because at the yeah, exactly. Numbers so, are. Thank you. Yeah, so where you have prediction there, you can just add a line before the return. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we can still call it prediction and overwrite the variable prediction, or we can call it prediction. Yeah, let's overwrite it. Yeah. yeah, it should be prediction. Uh, what was the name of the long list? Classes. Classes. Right, so it should be just classes, square brackets, prediction, minus one, because it's a zero index. Yeah, that makes sense. Minus one. And that should go and pick the, the element from classes and put it in prediction. And this way, it's already a string. All right, cool. Do you think that's yeah. all we'll need? Yeah, let's yeah, I mean try it. Yeah, it's a bit overkill to then convert it to string in the next line, but it's fine. You guys have been properly Pythonic. My, <laughs> I, 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 my, my, my version of Pythonic is change as little as possible. <laughs> yeah. So if we drop back to here and we run our build again, hopefully this will rebuild it. So you see all those initial steps, it just zips past them. Mm. 
just building the bit that we've changed. This is the only thing I don't really like about it. Is it's not like it's a bit slow build cycle, but that's just because we're in 2020 and we're used to things going super fast. I mean, you could mount it as a volume. You could mount the folder as a volume, and then you should be able to change it and just. Uh... Oh yeah, 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 and then just debug the uh, container yeah. as it's running. Yeah. If you if you put it on debug mode, I know that on Flask you can put it on debug mode and it will automatically restart the server if you change something on the. But I'm not sure I was on Starlet. A bit like PHP, yeah, that does that yeah. as well. It, it yeah, looks, the reload. Uh, that's that's sweet functionality. That does speed things up. Like you can just tweak it, change it, oh, revert it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it hasn't crashed. That's always a good sign. <laughs> and we'll refresh this. Just pick any old image, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Give it a minute. <sighs> That's uh, not looking good. <laughs> oh, type error uh, and supported operand types for category and int. But prediction, oh, prediction is not a, an integer. Yeah, we assumed it is, but it's a category, which I've never heard of uh, as a data type. Yeah, it's, that's annoying. <laughs> let's, let's try. Uh, I found something on the forum. It's mm -hmm. on the FastAI forum, so. I think I shared, I shared that in the chat. We could try and just int it. Plus. It's like learned or data C2. I, I haven't used it, but. Oh, oh that's annoying. I can't see the, seem to see the chat. Hold on, can I see it over here? Oh, I'm just there. Uh, this, we had this problem last time. I couldn't see the chat. I need to stop the share. Really? Oh yeah, I get chat back when I stop the share. Cool. Oh, thanks, Vishal. And that's definitely reinforcing. If you can just look it up on the Fast AI forum. There and don't get. So what bit of the, oh, so I need to share my screen again. Uh, I'm not sure. Jump back. Yeah, I think you can probably just do a uh, end of it. Yeah, should work. It would be nice to try it on a, on a Red Bull before having to rerun the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what was it, CD, fast, uh, uh, actually, just edit it from here. And it was server.py. Save us doing all the backwards and forwards thing. Mm. Okay. So we had predictions. What were we going to change this to? Yeah, to int that, that to cast everything into an int. That that the line, the learn part there you that you have over there, wherever you yeah. want. So by int here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just the prediction. I I hope that works. I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like the for string it would work. So. Yeah, that's that. what I found on as well. It wasn't clear that it would work for int as well. Just work and try. Okay, right quick. Um, try building again. Build cycle is not too slow.
we're used to being too fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forget this to work. I'll update my uh, the my repo as well. We'll run it, and assuming it doesn't crash, we'll test it. Running so F five. Make sure we're getting a new one. Like image. Uh, see the burger. Oh. <laughs> oh, do you think that's the minus one? No, the minus one should work. I'm not sure if it should work as in... Um... Yeah, I think that's just a class, because fried rice is nowhere near there. In the... Oh, is it nowhere near there? But it worked last time. <laughs> yeah, that is weird. I'm sure it got burgered correctly the last time. Try oh. it with the number as well and see if that works. Do you think the... Uh, it's worth having a look at what it's actually returning because the number. Oh, the classes are in the same order. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wonder if it is because uh, no. dictionaries in no. old Python weren't ordered. It, it would... It's a list though, isn't it? And they're ordered. Yeah, no, the list is ordered. And the other thing is before it was working with, with the thing that we were thought, thought it was wrong. Well, yeah, well exactly. the thing that we were, we were looking at. We just. Well, uh, Look at where the fried rice is again. I, what I would do is I would print those two, both the what happens after is cat, oh, nine. as well as what. It's um, number nine. Number yeah, nine. that's a good idea to print both. Um, print both. Print both what's in the list, um, because it should be accurate. But maybe there's some surprising behavior there. Oh, so yeah, I'm not sure it's uh, what's working. What's working before? <laughs> Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm thinking that the burger would be a good example because we 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 did we checked it and it worked before. So what you can do is in a string just when you actually return it uh, the JSON response two lines below. Yeah, you can just do a f string. Uh, are you using Python three point six or above? Um, I'm not sure what version of Python this is running on. I think it should be. Well, otherwise you can just do um, plus and then do a, a very ugly formatting at the end. So insert here, plus. Yeah. And then um, quotation, space, quotation, plus string of the prediction. Actually, no, because prediction is that now we've all written, we've all written a read We've all written it. <laughs> so we'll stop doing to, that. Yeah. No. We can just uh, call it. Uh, Prediction underscore or yeah, whichever it doesn't matter. So <laughs> prediction underscore string. Oh. Yeah, so that's a string. Then we're adding that, and at the end we can do the string of prediction, which is now the still the, the number. No, so just the uh, str. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Um, uh, so the predictions, we knew that was given as a number before. Yeah. Yeah, it was basically that, and we were we just were doing a string of prediction, which is yeah. not sure what, what could have gone wrong. Yeah. The list of classes we copied would be in the wrong order. So the classes in the actual Python code would be different to the ones in the file. Yeah, but before we were looking at the same. Oh no, I see what we're you mean. In the Excel we're file. In the I see what you mean. We're yeah, yeah. In Excel, yeah, it's quite possible. But you copied the same from, same from the Excel and you just transposed it. So yeah, it still right. Be, yeah. Eels, pilaf, chicken, pork. Yeah, so it's definitely it's it's in the same order. Hmm. This Weird. is run it first and we can think. Uh, yeah, but, but that's it. Yeah, run, run it and we'll think while it's running. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I'm not sure what it would be. Cross, uh... If we don't get this working just now, that can be that can be the challenge for the week ahead. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
What's wrong? Run it. You might have to refresh. Get some dim sum to look at. Oh, no. Can we, can we check what is 36 in the Excel sheet to know whether it got at least a number right? Great, six miso soup, that sounds right. That's not bad. So yeah, it's, there's the... Uh, it's not always like, it's the int thing then. The int thing does not work. Um, yeah. the, the int. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to ask, whether we can uh, print it before, not just after, because I was expecting the cast to be messed up. From the actual, it looks like it should support the int method, though. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, ran the wrong thing. Then we're down to that annoying list, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Ran the wrong thing. Play it again. Ooh, could we also print what um, is uh, classes of seven? No, wait, classes of sixteen, because I want to see classes of sixteen as hamburger in our list. Oh, seventeen. Oh, oh yeah. See if six. It's, it's yeah. It's see starts. if it's actually seventeen on the list. Yeah. So to see whether hamburger is. 17. In our case, we have to check if classes of 16 is hamburger by printing out classes of 16. Oh, I wasn't going to check it like this. I was just going to print it, but this is one way of doing it. Yeah, I'm wondering, do you, um, do you think it'd be better cheap, to quicker just to turn it into a dictionary and give it just a name value pair of name and, uh, and its index? And then we could just look it up like a dictionary. We could, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's the problem. Because I think we still have the problem of that thing coming out as a category. And I think that yeah. int is the thing that might not be working. Because right now it was giving us got 10, which is 30, but it should have been 36. And we were printing the prediction itself as being 30. Uh, wait, was it 30? Can you go back to the uh, page in Reba? What was the printed next to? 36. Yeah, Cortana's 30 um, in the list. So it's yeah. six off. It's oh, in Excel files. file. If it's just minus one or plus one, then um, I could see yeah. it just being like zero versus one indexing. Yeah. Yeah. Could we could we have it print it before? Wait, let me think. Yeah, after the cast. So we print it before the cast, but we don't print it after the cast. Um, so it would basically be in the prediction. So at the end of uh, our printing, JSON response, blah, 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 we can add plus uh, in prediction and see whether the, the fact that we cast it changes it. Yeah, oh. sure. so I think plus. I think I might have seen why that, um, the link that Andrew just put on the on the chat is pointing to the actual FastAI library, and you can see there that if you do an int, it takes the int of the data, but if you take a string, it takes the string of the object. Interesting, yeah. That is oh, possible. right. That's but we'll be able to see that now. So you want to add a space though, plus um, a string space plus int. Oh, sorry, string space as in like quotation, quotation mark space, sorry. <laughs> Plus in um, prediction. And it'll automatically cast it. Yeah, and we, we kind of want to see uh, what happens to it when it casts it. What's the difference between data and object on a category? I am really <laughs> wondering this time. <laughs> yeah, the terms are a bit. Uh, I'm I wondering if it's here. a dot object. Oh, let's start with this and then we can, we can see if it's a... We can cast a string of end to end and that'll get us. 
Oh yeah. Um, That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Do we need to cast that in? Or um, I think it should be fine, right? Yeah, no, no, no. The concatenation will work. It'll turn. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, no, sorry. Actually, this one not sure if it'll work because the plus you cannot do a plus with an end with something that's been turned into an end. Can you? So we, you need to cast it. Yeah, I think you really need to cast it on string and then an end, like put a cast yeah. around with a string again before you pass you sum. Because otherwise, you're trying to sum an integer with a string. Does it depend on the version of Python, or am I remembering it? I, I think it's still, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think it was, last time I tried it wasn't working. That's why I usually use uh, F strings, which is a bit yeah. nicer, but yeah. right now we're doing this way, so it's probably a safe to put that one in. Another build. That is from Python 3.7, at the top of the Docker file there. So F strings should be in it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where does it say that? Uh, it's a step one of eight yeah, from yeah. Python 3.7. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Docker dot run. Oh, back to the burger. Oh, there we Yay. go. <laughs> that, um, <laughs> so, yeah, the nice. so, which one is the correct one? 17. 17. 17, right. Yeah, so the 9 comes from the casting, so it's trying to cast 17, and it turns out 9. Yeah, so we need to use the category dot yeah, object. object to to do an int on the dot object instead of in the. I hope this is. I hope this. It's a nice and intuitive way of yeah mm -hmm. getting the the category number from category. <laughs> so let's get back to here. Right. So the down three lines on yeah. that one. So it should uh, up one. Yeah. So instead of int, uh, like if oh. you int prediction dot obj, mm -hmm. that should do it. I think prediction dot obj like that. Yeah, that's it. And now cross your fingers again. Well, chapter this works. <laughs> uh, I thought one of the fun things to do as well is that I'm I've got a light sale instance that I pay for anyway. Um, I thought it'd be cool if we just kept any of the demos that we built up, up and running and available. Oh, that'd be cool. And we could create like a wee menagerie of them. Huh? So it doesn't charge you that much to just have them available all the time? Oh, five bucks, but um, because I'm one of the Deep Racer community organizers, um, mm -hmm. Amazon um, keeps running little competitions, so I keep getting AWS credits as a... Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've sent me a Deep Racer bot as well. What's Deep Racer? Uh, Deep Racer is the um, competitive, um, it's like the Formula One of um, robotic racing. Um, oh, right. Really AI controlled, so you you train uh, you train your robot in a virtual environment in AWS RoboMaker, um, and then you, um, the, you you compete in a virtual um, track environment, and then the model oh. um, is exportable, and you can put it onto like a little RC car, and the RC car races around a real track. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I've got, uh, Presentation. Maybe I, I, we could segue into Deep Racer next week. Because I'm, uh, before um, the pandemic happened, I was actually trying to set up a Scottish Deep Racer league. Yeah, you gave a presentation in the AWS meetup, right? Can't do bananas. Uh, no, it doesn't know bananas. Oh, it didn't know bananas. Numbers are 
microphone. It was Pottage last time, so at least we're getting something. Yeah, sure. Uh... Hey! Yay. Yay. <laughs> it's a hamburger. <laughs> I think we can call that success. We can probably. Uh, the only other thing I would suggest is get rid of the debug um, statements. Yeah. yeah. So we do that so it looks beautiful. Yeah. How can we remove the nine at the back? Yeah, uh, I think we should just say hamburger. I don't know. Or result equals hamburger. Yeah. I think so. That's the cleaner UI. The only other thing I was thinking, you know, I remember they were talking about top five. Um, and one of the things I kind of like um, when I see something, I want to know how confident it is. I wonder mm. if we can get like the, it's at 80%. That'd be great. Yeah. 80% of a hamburger. Yeah, and 22% chip butty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is that just um, another part of that prediction? Because we were taking the, the zero, of, so the first element of that prediction, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we call predict. So maybe it's just, uh, is that just like um, the rest of the output from the predict method? Should we try that as our last thing and then we'll um, call it a day because I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. All right. So if we get rid of, we don't want, So the, we basically just want the prediction string now, don't we? Yeah, uh, well, unless you want to also try to see what's up, what else is there in the predict, uh, coming out of the predict method. Yeah. So, so I think if we do um, just after the prediction, or we can just uh, take um, the string above. The, yeah, we can. Uh, or you just kind of call the predict again. Oh yeah, that's the point. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Oh, you can just yeah uh, above you take the zero square bracket zero out, and right after prediction you can put um, comma star rest. Mm -hmm. yeah, just after the, the prediction, uh, just in the same line at the beginning after a prediction. But before the equal, you put a comma and then a star rest, which will unpack whatever comes out of the star, the then rest. The, yeah, rest as in whatever else is, is there. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just a variable rest, so we can call it whatever we want. Um, and then we can just string rest, uh, put it um, where the string prediction is, for example. The rest is fine, it's just in the JSON response. Mm -hmm. Okay, so prediction is going to get the zero if, and then star rest is uh, like a... Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just because I'm not sure how many things are, return, is return, are returned by prediction. If it's just two, then we di didn't even need the, the star. But if it's more than two, we're just uh, putting them all in, uh, in the variable for rest. Yeah, just to I make think, sure. I think that's right. We should just output rest and see what it looks like rather yeah. than making Assumption. Yeah, so just um, in the result after, yeah, after there, and just do string rest instead of string prediction. And you can take away the, the other one. So, and set here and just put in rest. Yeah. And then the, whatever is on yeah, that part there, you can remove it. Now we just have to hope that it doesn't, it's not something huge that will overflow. <laughs> Let's roll these line up. It looks like it might be quite large from the, <laughs> the documentation. Um, All oh, right. <laughs> so, uh, assuming this is the predict method, it looks like it gives us the category, then something, like, then th the third returning is a list of the probabilities for every class. So we'd expect 100 items in that final list. Oh, right. oh interesting. Wait, fit. Did you share that link? I shared it in the chat, yeah. Oh, cool. assuming, assuming this is the right learner, I don't actually know the difference. Right. Mm -hmm. It's um, one of the things Jeremy's constantly um, tries to drill in during his MOOC is that um, we're experimentalists. Um, just try it and see if it works. <laughs> if you're not sure which way to do it, the, the fast AI is fast, so try it both ways. See which one goes first empirically.
Oh yeah, so actually probably we only need the, the second element, but <laughs> we'll find out. Oh. oh. All right, well. Well, it's fixed. It's just saying that we would, we would then have to go around and find the one, two. Let's get the highest 10, you know? I think, yeah, that's the 9e uh, e to the minus 1. Yes, these are all small. So, so the yeah, ones so are 90 percent there where you are. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's 0 0.9. So it's 90 percent confident that it's number. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that so I suppose we just need to find the index in the tensor that corresponds to the zeroth value, and then convert it into a percentage. It's annoying that sorting it's going to mess up all the indexes. <laughs> No, I think they're already in the right order. It wasn't knowing the number for hamburger. Oh yeah, it's the right order for actually looking things up. It's just in terms of if you wanted to sort it to get the top yeah. five. It would oh, mess up. I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we can get confidence on the top on the top one though easily. And like ninety percent burger, I think, is a pretty good result. Yeah, actually, yeah. So that's the second argument, isn't it? That's the index for the hamburger in the array of probabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can leave it as a as a exercise for the next one. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, um, I'll, um, I'll stick the, I'll, I'll just leave this thing running and um, I'll stick the, I'll, I'll set the code up somewhere where we can play with it. Before, before we go, can you show us the Excel file again and see what the element number 10 is? I'm just wondering what it's so confident about. Temporably. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Hamburger wasn't it? It came back with. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, because it, it's all in the right order, isn't it? And so the nine is what was coming out when we were printing it. So it was 17 and nine, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, because that's, yeah, that's not what it's come back with. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Um, well, uh, I think we've done really well. Let's. Um, yeah, let's call let's it take that. Something to, <laughs> to, let's to challenge it. ourselves with through the week. And um, what what I'd like, um, if um, if we can't get uh, any consensus on where to go next, um, uh, maybe do deep racer next week, um, and then we'll do um, we'll jump back into something else in fast AI the week after, like maybe do uh, segmentation or something like that. Uh, yeah, the, the problem with segmentation is though it, it, it does require a bit more grunt and it does take a bit more time uh, because the, um, it's, a much, it's a much more challenging computer vision problem to solve. So your mm. training data does take, a, uh, does take a lot more epochs and a lot more training data to be able to work it out. Like the Canvig data sets are huge. Mm. Right. Or we could go really lightweight and do collaborative filtering. Yeah. Or we can also um, actually uh, attack one of the uh, problems that are either on um, on cargo or on uh, driven data. Yeah, that's an option. Yeah, well, let's, as I say, let's have it. We'll all get on Slack and um, we'll have a chat and figure out what we want to do um, in uh, a week's time or two weeks' time. Sounds good. Cool. And that burger's made me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right. So what I'll do is, I'll, um, unless you guys want to hang on here, um, I'm going to drop off just now. Um, but uh, I can leave the room open if you guys want to chat afterwards and talk about me or something. Uh, I'm hungry as well, so I'll probably leave as well. Yeah, and this whole food business. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Right. We should do, we should organize much, a, so, a social one where we don't do any ML um, and we just um, <laughs> drink beer and talk to each other. Yeah. And then uh, start recording how many minutes pass by until someone mentions something ML related. <laughs> that sounds like uh, it sounds like we could build a tool for that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, Thank I'm you. Stop recording okay. now. Appreciate everyone. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for, thank, uh, thank you for your time. Years. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Right.